stores are the heart of geo server basically everything that we do all the data that we upload any vector data raster data or even a connection to a third party will happen via stores in the last video we created this earth data workspace and we will use that only for today's lecture i will head over to stores and you can see that we have quite a few stores available by default which includes different types such as our grid world image image mosaic shape file geotiff world image so on and so forth now to create a new store we can simply click on this new store and then you can see that there are so many options available depending upon the data that we want to deal with for example we have vector data raster data and of course connection with the other geo servers as well in this video we will just walk through some of these just so that you can get an idea that how exactly we can create the store for now let's start with the very basic one that is a shape file when i click on a shape file it will open a form for that particular store and this form will change according to the type of store that you are dealing with for example if i open post gis the form will be very different if i open geotiff the form will again be very different so again we'll head back to shape file and as you can see that as our default workspace was earth data it is selected over here then i can give name of my source so for example all cities any description that i want to write all cities from natural earth so all the data that we are going to deal with today is taken from natural earth website so it's a platform where we can download vector and raster data for free then here we have to select the connection parameter so what do we mean by that is we have to select the shape file location so for me it is on my desktop under a gs data folder if you see right now by default it will try to check the data directory inside the geo server itself but i can go to home desktop and gs data and here you will see that i have different shape files available for now let us work with the airports now when i click on save this will actually show me the shape file itself and i can click on publish and we are immediately redirected to add layer functionality in this video we are not going to deal with add layer but just for us to save the time and see the data actually i will simply publish this layer so i will click on save and now you can see that we have earth data colon ne underscore 10 meter underscore airports available i can go to layer preview and i can click on open layers to see this data live and here are all the airports i can click anywhere and i will be able to get more information about that point so here you can see that we have so many points that geo server has given information about all of them now if i head back to the stores i will have that store available over here for me so i can click on here anytime and if i want to make any changes i can do that but you can imagine that if you have different shape files available it will be cumbersome for you to every time go and create a new store for a new shape file to address this problem we have also directory of shape files available here the data source will be the folder where we have to look for the shape file so i will give the name all natural data and description let's keep blank for now and here instead of actually selecting the shape file i will simply just select that folder and then that's all once i click on okay you will see that all the layer names are in front of me now i don't have to publish because in this video we are not going to create a layer but if i go back to the store you will see that my all natural data is available and i can click here anytime i can click on save and the settings will be changed this is how we create the store for a directory of shape files
Similarly, we can also create a store for post GIS. So to do that, we will again have to give some data source name. So data from EG and we have to fill in the connection parameters. If you have a JNDI URL, you can simply instead of doing this, you can simply use JNDI post GIS and here you can give the connection detail. Now here again, I will fill in, I will fill in the detail. If I open my PG admin, you will see that I have this data known as cities where I have some data available with the coordinates in it. So I will try to publish this layer only. I will head back and my database name is Postgres. So is my user and password for now. Here I can play with the settings such as how many maximum connections we want what should be the batch in batch insert size so that if once we develop the application from front end we will be able to actually push the data into postgres using GeoServer itself and once i save this then you can see all the tables that we have in our postgres are listed over here inside this we can take a look at cities and for now again i will stick with the default settings and now if I go back to layer previews, I have the cities available over here and the data is directly streaming from database itself. Now it's not mandatory that whatever data that you see over here will be like this forever because again this is a connection with the database. So as the database objects will increase or decrease, same will be seen on GeoServer. So here you can see all the cities that we have are available and if we decide to let's say for example this one is Nakchu so if I do a post GIS delete query where name is equal to Nakchu so you can see that one record is deleted and I believe now you can see that this is gone. So this is the power of GeoServer connection of Postgres. Now the data is real time. Whatever happens on Postgres will be directly reflected on your GeoServer. Now enough about vector stores. Let's try to create a raster store. So we'll create a very simple GeoTIFF raster store. Again, the procedure is a little bit similar where we have to give the source name. So natural raster. And here we have to select the actual TIFF file that we want to publish. So again, desktop, GS data, and I have a TIFF file over here, which I can publish. Now if I go back to layer preview, here is our TIFF file. So this is how we can also create a GeoTIFF layer using GeoServer. Now the last thing that we will see in this lecture is allowing us to connect with other GeoServer or any other platform that follows OGC standard. For example, I have this one GeoServer where I have a get capabilities document available for it. So I can simply copy this and go to the WMS and again I can give a name so external GS and here I can put the get capabilities URL and if there are any username and password associated with it you can put it over here otherwise you can keep it as a blank and click on save. This will now allow us to stream data available on some another machine to our machine so here you can see that if i publish something like water areas then we can simply save this and this will be available for us in layer preview again i can search for water and here we have water areas which we can open to see the preview 
this will also depend upon the speed that you have for your external service as well because the data is ultimately streaming from there only so this is everything about stores thank you